Before exporting your Blackboard course, it is a good idea to clean up your files area. There are several reasons for this. First, unlike Blackboard, Canvas has a course size limitation of 1 GB. Secondly, although they can store files, neither Blackboard nor Canvas is actually designed for long-term file storage. They're meant to be used for actively teaching courses. If you have files you want to archive, you can use Google Drive or Dropbox, both of which are free with unlimited storage for ASU faculty and staff. Finally, while Blackboard keeps its files kind of hidden away, in Canvas, extraneous files are going to get in the way of your workflow. It is easier to delete files in Blackboard than in Canvas, so let's get rid of them before exporting. Click under Course Management and Files, then click the title of your course that shows up. Here's a page with all the files stored in this course. You'll see it only shows 25 at a time, so the first thing to do is to click Show All at the bottom. Now we're going to look for three things. Audio or video files, duplicate files, and unneeded files. First, let's look for audio or video files, and we need to get those out of here. And that's because audio and video files are very large, and also because it's best to post these into a streaming site, such as YouTube for videos, SoundCloud for audio, or ASU's partner MediaAmp, which can handle both video and audio. You can then link to these or embed them in Canvas, instead of storing them in the files area. We can cover streaming sites in a different session, but for now, we're just going to download these files onto our computer to save them and then delete them out of Blackboard. So you're going to go through your files looking for ones that end with .wav, .aif, .mp3, .mp4, .mov, and so on. You'll click the checkbox next to them and then choose Download Package at the bottom. This should download all of your selected files as a zip package onto your computer. Go open the zip to make sure you've got everything, then go back to Blackboard and delete those files. This should create a lot more space in your course. Next, let's look for duplicate files. And you can tell which ones are duplicate because you see the 1, 2, 3, and so on in parentheses at the end of the course file name. These are all duplicates of the same file. How did this happen? First, it can happen by attaching the same file to different areas in Blackboard. There's another way this can happen too. Let's say I'm attaching a file to a page and I use this file attach icon here, select it from my computer, and upload it to Blackboard. Then maybe later I realize I made a mistake in that file or wanted to add more information, so naturally I edit the item. And then in Blackboard, delete the link to the file and upload my new one. Most people don't realize when they do that that Blackboard actually keeps the old file, and when it uploads a new file with the same name, it appends a number in parentheses to the end of the file name. So when you look at your files area, there could be many files that are obsolete, so you'll probably want to delete all of those. We also want to delete unneeded files. For example, notice all my old syllabi here. I have them going all the way back to 2014. I might also have old assignment instructions or articles that I'm no longer using, whatever the case may be. So there are two ways to delete files. The first is to select all the files in your course and click delete. And I know this is scary, but bear with me. Blackboard will bring up a message saying, wait a minute, some of these files are being used in your course. This means that they are attached somewhere in the links of your active course area. You can simply deselect all the files that Blackboard is telling you are active by clicking on the very top checkbox, then click submit and Blackboard will delete all the other files, the ones that are not linked somewhere in your course. This might be the way to go, but it might also be too much. Perhaps you have files that are not linked in your course that you want to keep nonetheless. If that's the case, don't do it the first way. Instead, you can manually select all the files here that you want to delete one at a time and proceed more cautiously. Whichever method you choose, you'll end up with a much leaner files area that will import into Canvas more easily and save you time later. Full typed instructions for this video can be found at links.asu.edu forward slash bbprep.